so we're going to get started in a minute um but just to encourage you there are some really really uh, great resources out there um so i'll start with the with my message for today in just a moment um but two of the things that have really encouraged me guys that are already tuning in before we start um, I've been listening to, I mentioned it on Sunday, uh, Louis Giglio, he's got some great talks um, at the minute, What Now, um, I'm Not Okay But God Is, It's Okay To Freak Out, they're brilliant, beautiful things um, that I feel he's really anointed for the time uh, that we're in, so it's, it's a good resource to get your hands on. And also I've been listening to some really great talks, guys, from Vu Church. Uh, they're a church in Miami, Florida, and uh, their pastors are Dawn Cherie Wilkinson and uh, Rich Wilkinson Jr. And uh, I'm going to refer to them uh, a little bit today, um, but they've got a really great talk. It's part of a series that they did uh, last year, and it's called It's a Phase. And uh, it's I find it really appropriate for this time. I find it really helpful. Um, so if you are looking for some good content or just some different content to the stuff you usually interact with, um, then I can recommend those two. They're really good. And for any teenagers watching, I'm a big fan of uh, Lily Joe. Oh, Anna's saying that she listened to one of his podcasts today. They are really good, aren't they? I just feel he's God's really given him something to say at this time. He's really listening well. Um, and for the young people watching, if you're on Insta, check out the Lily Joe project. Um, she's done a whole series of really great resources for you to listen to, uh, of all ages actually. All sorts of things on mental health and well-being, uh, keeping ourselves physically active, there's dance routines. Uh, she's a really lovely person and her heart is to encourage. She's a trained counsellor um, and she's done a series of podcasts recently called um, Eavesdrop where she's talking to frontline NHS and other essential workers and uh, it's a really good insight. Um, so do do listen to that. Anna Peachman, yes, Anna Vu Church, yes. Uh, Pam Henderson, before we start, you can find Louis Giglio um, online. So if you type in Passion City Church online, um, you can look at their talks, you can watch. Uh, so Passion City Church online. Um, I think he's also got his own website now. So if you type in the spelling that you've given, Louis Giglio, um, that's really good. Anyway, so I will get started. I think we're probably about half past now. Um, I have been really um, thinking, to be honest, about what I could bring. Um, and sorry, before I start, the name of the second church is Vu Church, V-O-U-S, uh, which means you. So Vu Church, and it's in Florida, Miami. Um, it's Rich Wilkinson Jr. Um, and his wife is Dawn Cherie Wilkinson. And um, yeah, they're, they're really good. Okay, so yeah, uh, what I wanted to do this morning, I was really thinking, what can I add to these beautiful, um, these beautiful series of talks um, that we're having in the morning? They're a great way to start, aren't they? To be encouraged and to see some, some kind of friendly faces that we know and love. And uh, one of Louis Giglio's talks that's really impacted me, um, it's called What Now? And uh, some of you may have already accessed it or access it after this, but it's, it's worth your time. And he asks a question um, and he says, he senses, he lives in Atlanta, Georgia, by the way, so his context is slightly different to ours. Um, but he said, one of the things that is striking him is that he's sensing a bit of a shift. That people who thought, you know what, maybe as a race, as humanity, as my family, as me as a person, maybe we're not going to make it. And he said, now that we seem to have gone through the first wave, um, he's not saying that we need to be overconfident or not still rely on God, but he was saying for, for him and others, it seems to be shifting from, am I going to make it to I'm going to make it, but what is this going to make of me? And I thought that was absolutely brilliant. Um, I'm not am I going to make it, but what is this going to make of me? How is this pandemic going to impact me, uh, my faith, my family? Um, not so much how did I come into this, but how am I going to um, make a, an exit um, from this? How am I going to start my life again after this? And what does that mean for me? How is this going to shape and mould and change me? And I was really looking at that question, um, probably like most of us, I've had plans and things that I've wanted to achieve in this time that haven't necessarily materialised. Um, I uh, don't beat myself up over that. I try and give myself a bit of grace 
we're all very busy at the moment in different ways and life looks very different for all of us doesn't it um, but I want to come out of this as a better person. I want to come out of this as a more considerate, compassionate, patient person um, with a, a better level of gratitude maybe as well. And so when I look at his question, um, I'm going to make it, but what will COVID-19, what will this situation of lockdown make of me? My response to that was, well, it depends how we view it, doesn't it? Um, certain things shift our perspective. Uh, Rich Wilkerson Jr. from the V Church that I talked about gave a great line. He said, um, experience does not dictate our theology. Our theology dictates our experience. And I heard that and I was like, wow, that is amazing. And so with that in mind, the lens that we look through this pandemic at will affect our experience of it. Our theology and our faith in God can affect the way that we experience this and the way that we come out of it. But a lot of the time for me, it depends, even daily, um, the lens that I look at it through. So I started to pray and I started to do a little bit of research into lenses and into opticians and the way that our vision works and the way that um, uh, an optometrist, is that the right word? Um, a way that somebody who studies eyes knows the right lens to prescribe somebody. Because I want to view this through the right lens. I want God to prescribe me his lens to view this pandemic from. And so I started having a look um, and this really leapt out at me. I hope it blesses you. It really blessed me. So I started looking um, at eye care and how to know the right way to see and how it's decided what lens is right for us as an individual. So when you go for an eye test, guys, you go for some pre-stage assessments. And the first one of those is before they even look at the right lens for you, they do a series of tests. So the first one, you've probably had this maybe, um, is called a tonometer. And it's where a small puff or gust, a gust of air um, is blown onto the surface of the eye. And it feels a little bit uncomfortable. It doesn't feel pleasant. Often we just shut our eyes because it's quite an uncomfortable sensation, but that's there to gauge the internal pressure of the eye. Um, and when I read this, I just felt God go lid. How's your internal pressure? And so I want to ask you this morning, how is your internal pressure? If the COVID pandemic is the gust of wind or the ferocious wind that is blowing on the surface of your life, are you shutting your eyes because it's just an uncomfortable sensation? Or are we opening our eyes and are we trying to view this through the right lens? You see, one of the reasons why they do that tonometer test is to gauge, as I said, the internal pressure of the eye. And one of the things they're looking out for is glaucoma. Now, without getting too scientific, I looked into glaucoma. Um, it's the way my brain works. I like to research what I say. And um, it's, it's when we have a buildup of fluid in the eye that doesn't drain well. And if it doesn't drain well, it builds up and it causes pressure. Um, and that pressure can affect not just one eye, but both eyes. And interestingly, I looked into what is the risk factor for having glaucoma. And one of the risk factors is a high degree of short-sightedness. And I just felt God smack me between the eyes with this today, church, and say, Lid, are you draining well? How are you managing with internal pressure? If I blow on the surface of your life, Lid, what is the internal pressure going to look like? Are you viewing this through my lens? Because you see, when our perspective and our vision is distorted, it doesn't just affect one area of our life. Just like that analogy, it affects both eyes. It affects the way we see everything. And so just to encourage you, church, to really gauge that internal pressure. Um, in the Psalms, in Psalm 55, verse 22, God tells us to cast all our burdens on him and he will sustain us. He will never allow the righteous to be shaken. And that doesn't necessarily mean that we won't have hardship, but it does mean that God is in it with us. So gauge your internal pressure. Don't let that pressure build up and affect our vision, affect the way that we see God and the way that we see the others and life around us. I found that really interesting, this um, internal pressure builds up when we have a high level of short-sightedness. I want to be somebody, I hope you want to be somebody this morning that has a long-term view on this pandemic, that isn't just looking around with a short-sighted view. It's so easy for us to do that, isn't it? When finance is tight, when we can't see loved ones, we just see our immediate, we just see what's in front of us, and that's normal. But I just pray that God would give us 
this longer term vision, this longer term perspective. And so the second thing that they do is something called auto refraction. And it's a test of how long or short sighted your vision is. And I just felt God say, look back, get a cast in your rear view mirror lid. Look at the history that I have with you. Look at the history that God has with you. Have we got times in your life? There might not be a lot. There might not feel significant. But God, I'm sure, will have dropped moments of peace, moments of his love, of his redemption, where he's just done, guys, good stuff in our lives, where he's got a track record. We have a history with him. He is faithful. So check in your rear view mirror threshold. Have a look today. Change that perspective. Work not on the short term, not seeing the collateral damage of what's going on at the minute for all of us in different ways, but extend that long term vision and look at what God has done for us because it will inform how we view him now. You see, the God that we worship is still the same God before COVID-19. He hasn't changed, but our lens has. The way that we view him and the way that we view life has changed. So let's, let's change with him and in line with his vision. Now, at the start of this year, there was loads of jokes, wasn't there? Um, I can't wait for this. I've got 2020 vision. Um, I'm not going to lie. If 2020 vision is the perfect way to see, then here's the irony. At the minute, we can't see clearly and it is 2020. So let's let God be the lens that we view this from. He's got the bigger view. And finally, this last pretest that they do before they check what lens is right for you to view from is they take a photograph of the back of your eye and they use that, they store it and they refer back to that uh, to see changes in your vision, to see how your vision improves or develops or deteriorates. And for me, I'm so glad that if God took a picture of me at the start of my relationship with him before I knew him, I'm so glad that he can look back and hopefully I can look back at that kind of um, that picture of, I guess, the back of not my eye, but the back of my life now of how I used to be. And I can track the changes that God has made in my life. I can track the changes that God has made in some of your lives as well. So be encouraged. We're not looking at that old view anymore. We're not looking at the old view of our eye. We can look at that and give our, our eyesight a fresh, a fresh refresh, I guess, this morning and look through the lens of God. He's tracking our changes, guys. Isn't it good that we aren't the same people that we were? Isn't it good that we aren't even the same people that we were when this started? Let's be aware of the progress that we're making. The Bible tells us in 2 Corinthians chapter 3 verse 18 that we are being transformed into the likeness of God with ever increasing glory. We're not where we were, we're not where we're meant to be, but thank goodness that we're a work in progress, that God loves us. And I said that I would refer finally to uh, Pastor Rich Wilkinson Jr., a great guy from View Church in Miami. And he gave a quote that really resonated with me that I felt fit uh, before I finished today. He was talking in his preach, it's a phase. He was talking about change and we're all in a big period of change and that is affecting the lens through which we view this pandemic. And he says, change is something that we do, but transformation is something we become. Isn't that gold? Isn't that so good? Change is something we all do. We change our clothes, we change our diets, we change our jobs, we change our cars. We can also change our perspective. We can also change our attitude. We can change the lens through which we view our lives at the minute. And we can trust that God is good. We can trust that he has a bigger term picture and let's view this through his lens. And in doing that, we can be transformed into his likeness. So however you feel today, Threshold, we love you. Um, I am sending all my hugs from me to you. Let's view this as the way God does. Let's not let that internal pressure build up. Let's not let it affect our vision. Let's uh, drain that internal pressure by coming to God every day with whatever we have. Let's take his longer term perspective. Let's not be short sighted. And finally, let's understand that however we are today, we're a work in progress. Let's look at who we were, be thankful that we're not there anymore, but be encouraged that we can be transformed into the likeness of God because change is something we all do, but transformation is who we're becoming. So I love you guys. Be encouraged. Have a great Tuesday and we will see you soon. Bye.